a friend, a protector, and a safeguard of the home. Agni the fire god is indeed a most celebrated deity. Not only is he associated with sacrificial, domestic, and funeral fires, but also the supposed fire within humans that serves to digest food. His associations stretch to lightning, comets, and even the sun itself. He was particularly important back in the Vedic period of 1500 to 500 BCE, where the holy texts in Hinduism contain more hymns dedicated to him than any other deity, with the exception of Indra. His powers though are not only in the form of burning things, or to provide warmth, but also come in the form of wisdom, that he knows the thoughts and feelings of many men, given that he is witness to them as he sits in their stomachs, digesting their food with flame. He's also able to be in multiple places at once, as he soaks up information, whether this be over clandestine meetings in the night, where a campfire is present, or in Hindu ceremonies, where fire is commonly used. As for the mythology, tales about Agni differ from account to account. In one version, Agni had come to offend the sage Brigu. In one of these offences, Brigu had stolen the demon's wife for his own, but Agni alerted the demon in question, who quickly reclaimed what was his. This would cause Brigu to curse Agni, making everything he touched turn to flame. So horrified by such a fate, Agni went to the creator god Brahma and begged him to help as he feared that he would inadvertently set everything on fire. Recognizing the damage that this would cause, Brahma agreed to modify the curse so that Agni would purify everything instead of turning it to ash. You might think that Brahma would have been better off just removing the curse altogether, but in this, it can be derived that while fire can cause harm, it can also be considered to be something that starts anew. We've seen the same concept in Shiva, where while he is the god of destruction, his destruction brings about the opportunity for something new to grow. A fire is also considered to be benevolent in the case of Agni, as opposed to destructive, because many seek comfort in fire, using it for heat or to cook food. Incidentally, the destructive and relentless nature of fire is also demonstrated in one instance where Agni loses his energy. In order to regain his power, he attempts to devour an entire forest, despite warnings and pleas from Indra not to do so. Unable to resist the replenishing of his energy, Agni burns the forest. It serves to show us a more human side of the gods, that despite Indra's request, Agni cannot control himself and goes against him to consume the forest. Agni is perhaps mostly associated with sacrificial fires, where he is thought to carry the offerings of humans to the gods. As some accounts have it, one cannot commune with the gods without the presence of Agni, or fire, as he is the only one capable of carrying the message of mortals to the gods above. One legend has it that Agni was first afraid to take on such an ambassadorial role, given that his brothers had been killed performing the same tasks. As a result, Agni hid at the bottom of the ocean, where he couldn't be found, but the fish gave him away. As a result, Agni cursed the fish so that they would become easy prey to mortals. In another version, it is the frogs who reveal Agni to the gods, for which he curses. Parrots are also considered to be another animal which ousted Agni to the gods, but the gods punished the parrots for their telling of tales by distorting their speech thereafter. Agni would escape the gods though, and would find his final hiding place inside a tree. Thus the tree is now considered sacred in Hindu rituals, and its sticks are now used to make fires in honour of Agni. Agni did end up taking his duty as messenger between the gods and mortals, but only did so once he had negotiated a deal with the gods, where he was able to keep a share of the sacrifices offered by the mortals. In another myth, he is said to have been dismembered by unknown means, and is distributed amongst all things earthly. His flesh becomes resin, his bones become trees, his semen becomes gold and silver, his blood is transformed into minerals, his nails become tortoises, his entrails become plants, his bone marrow becomes sand, and his hair becomes grass. But over time, his importance as a god diminishes. As legends have it, he became too overindulged in his share of the offerings from the mortals, and thus fell from the pantheon. In another version, 
we see a more insidious side to Agni, where he uses two sharp iron tusks to devour mortals without mercy. However, when the gods call upon him, he destroys the tusks with his flames and appears to them as if nothing had happened. In both versions, he slips out from being a favoured god that serves to protect and cleanse and becomes something far less inspiring. As well as serving as a conduit between the gods and mortals, Agni is also responsible for lightning, which is born from his union with the cloud goddess Sandhya. He is also frequently associated with funeral pyres, where he escorts the deceased to meet with Yama, the god of the underworld. His heritage is another thing that is often disputed on. While some believe he is the son of Brahma, born from his forehead to bring the cycle of night and day, he is also considered to be the son of the celestial waters, and that he was carried down from the heavens as rain, before seeping down into the earth's core, where he became fire, or molten. Others believe he was spawned by the mortals accidentally, when two sticks were rubbed together. Other tales have him born fully grown, and was said to be so ravenously hungry that he consumed his own parents, whoever they were. His relationships with the other gods are often a point of contention, or at least, met with many different ideas. For one, he is considered to have been married to the daughter of King Nilla, who had impressed upon him after being the only woman in the kingdom who managed to kindle a flame. He is also said to have fathered Kartikeya, the god of war, after his conquest of the wives of seven sages, implying that Kartikeya is not the son of Shiva and Parvati. In the epic of Ramayama, the king of demons abducts Rama's wife Sita. When Rama rescues her from the army of demons, he begins to doubt that Sita was faithful during her capture. After accusing her of an affair, she throws herself into a fire so as to prove herself loyal. She did not burn, however. It's said that Agni did not harm her, so as to exemplify the point that she hadn't been unfaithful and that she could indeed be trusted. He is also considered to be one of the first deities to have taken human form after being born from Brahma. He is described as being a red man, who has seven tongues, for which he uses to lick up butter offered by sacrifices. Others state that he places butter on his face, which is used as fuel for the constant fire around him. He is also portrayed as having seven arms, three legs, and two black faces. He is not usually portrayed without his trusted ram, and if not, can be seen riding a chariot with horses made of fire. Agni is also depicted as being young, given that each time he is reignited, he is said to have been reborn anew. He is also known to carry a fan, for which he uses to fan the flames, as well as a sacrificial ladle, an axe, and a flaming torch or javelin. It's clear to see how much importance Agni might have had with ancient Hinduism, for he offered something of a guarantee that the message of men would be delivered to the gods. After all, while they may not have been able to have physically seen the gods, they could physically see and feel fire. In a way, this made Agni real, as well as making his purpose as messenger real, and therefore made the gods real. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Agni the Fire God, as well as who you'd like to see next. As always guys, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.